Hello, boys. You've just dialed in live to the center of the grilling universe. That's right, guys. It's red hot and ready, and we are in trouble. Man, we are in trouble. We have no idea what we've done, but we got to make up for it, okay? We're going to be cooking a few things that are going to prevent us from getting the ass whooping of a lifetime. You know what? John's always in trouble, so he has no hope at all. But today I'm going to show you how to get out of the doghouse without having to get on your knees. Come to think of it, what did I do anyway, huh? It's totally legal in Amsterdam. She was totally of age and the needles were new. This ain't no joke, guys. We are in trouble. We don't know what we've done, but we have to get out of it, don't we? Okay, we've pissed the woman off somehow, and she's all over her ass like stink on a blanket, right? So, what we have to do first, think. Think, think. Okay, what are we gonna do? I find if you have a violin, as I do, a very romantically played violin sonata and a bouquet of flowers does just that trick. And uh, this little number I've been working on is called, I'm sorry, If that doesn't get a melting at the knees, I don't know what will. Okay? The flowers, beautiful. Later on, going into the salad, right? It's the gift that keeps on giving. A lot like syphilis. I'm sure that was very rude of me, wasn't it? I don't know. Okay, getting right to it. What do we have to do to impress the woman? Spend some money, okay? We got smoked salmon, we got caviar, we got champagne. But there's so many champagnes out there, which one are you gonna buy? I like to buy the birthday vintage of my girlfriend, okay? So I've got a lovely 1985 here, okay? This, you know, this, this is gonna set you back 100 bucks or so, but it's well worth it, you know, because not only do they forgive you, well, they lose control, right? And we all know what that means. Drop your pants. When opening a bottle of champagne, you subtly remove the cork, letting the gas escape ever so gently, just like when you're in church and gotta cut one, right? You just sort of lean up against you know, that kind of thing. It could have been a big blowout, but, and as tempting as that is in a place that echoes, you're just gonna let it out slowly, right? It's the same thing with champagne, okay? You grip the end, you slowly turn it. God, I had last night. <sighs> okay, so I lied. We're no longer going to hell because hell don't want us anymore. That's about four and a half ounces of goat cheese straight into the bowl here, and we got wasabi, okay? You asked me what wasabi is. It is Japanese horseradish made from a green root found in the water. Okay, that's about all you need to know because you're not going to be farming it any time in the near future, are you? It's not something I'd like to get into. This is the stuff that they use to season sushi, you know? And uh, if you know sushi like I know sushi, she needs some seasoning, right? Okay, we're going to take this horseradish and wasabi mixture, and we're going to taste it, okay? Very nice. It sounds like this radiation blast up through your nasal passages, clearing them right out. No, no drips, no sniffles, no nothing. Okay, straight on to our southwestern tortilla base here. I'm gonna spread this puppy out. Look at that. We want to reserve a little bit for the top, right? This is the garnish, okay? If it tastes great, that's one thing. If it looks great, she's gonna forgive you all the faster. Take our smoked salmon, lay it across here. Oh yeah. You know, as time goes on, it doesn't really seem that important anymore. You know, the apology thing, it's all, it's probably the right thing to do, but we throw a smoked salmon on, we grab our other tortilla, flatten it out, grab a knife, you slice this baby up into manageable sized pieces, like so, pinwheel sort of design, Take some more of this wasabi, throw it on top, the wasabi cream cheese. And we take a little strip of the smoked salmon here, just like that. Make like a nice little bow, put it on top. What do we got? We got some unfertilized fish eggs. Caviar. This is expensive as well. 
This is another reason you're getting out of the doghouse. Doesn't matter what it tastes like, you just tell them what it costs, right? Simple economics. You got this, you walk up, oh baby, I'm so sorry. Have a bite of some fish eggs. And just pop it in. Got and while they're most full and they're chewing, you tell them exactly what happened with that 17 year old. No apologies involved. Dig it? Come on back. Oh, guys, you're in the doghouse again. Now, how are you going to redeem yourself this time? Well, you could dig deep into the depths of your heart and reveal your true feelings. Yeah. Or you could buy your gift. Girls love gifts. And the main reason is just because it shows you've been thinking about them and it shows that you've been spending some time trying to find things that they'll actually like. Not to mention the fact that you're spending perfectly good beer money on her. Today we have Lucy, and she's part of the crew. She's been on the search for the perfect girl gift. So stick around, because you'll be out of that doghouse in no time. Hey, there's flowers in the fridge. Ooh, pretty. Oh, that's for the show, the sucking up show, where he has to suck up to his girlfriend because he was wrong. It's all about the me. May old acquaintance be forgot. And that's right, guys, you're spending New Year's Eve alone, and so am I, okay? But in all serious, I'm sorry, baby. I didn't mean to say what I said last time. It was the liquor talking. Please forgive me. Give me one more chance. I won't do it again. I love you. Yeah, right. I've tried that. It doesn't work. Got ourselves a nice Canadian duck here, okay? We're gonna break this down into its four essential components. That's the legs and the breasts, okay? Funny how that works. And we're gonna marinate it in a plum marinade, plum and red wine marinade. This is gonna be fantastic. And I tell you, if your woman doesn't take you back, forgive you, and give you all the extra loving that you really deserve, well, my name's not John Pritchard, is it? Okay? What we have to do, we're gonna start by removing the breasts. Oh, man. Yeah, I know it's frozen, okay? Look, I'm trying to apologize here. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know I should have thought ahead, right? I'm trying to do something nice here for God's sakes, okay? Okay, look, okay, I'm sorry, right? I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, baby. I got a little carried away there. But um, we managed to get the duck separated nicely here. I'm going to continue slicing through here. Look at the way that comes off. Just like a hot knife through butter. Woo-wee! Mmm. And I'll move on to the next leg at this point. Trying very, very hard not to disturb the fragile, tender breast meat. Okay? Bend it back. Dislocate that leg from the other thing. There you go. Two legs. Now that our breasts are separated, we want to remove them in as many pieces as I made earlier. And we'll continue to remove the other breast here. Okay. Try to break it back a bit. Separate that from the breastbone. There we are. We've managed to dismantle our duck now, rather effectively, I think. And we can move on to the more romantic elements of our programming today. Okay, we have a bowl here. We're going to put our duck within the bowl, and now we're going to put our ingredients for marination in, okay? We have one can of plums here in heavy syrup. Dump that in, and you want to massage the plums into your duck, okay? There you go, just like that. You want to get all that good plummy flavor into that bird. Oh, that's not what I do best. Now we want to add two bay leaves, crushed. Just throw them right in there like that. Got some juniper berries from the juniper tree. Dean, you got to look at that. Mm-mm. Yeah, those are good. Hey, okay, straight in. Got three cloves of garlic. These are just slivered. See, none of these things that we're putting in here are actually going to be used with the duck itself. It's just flavoring the duck. We're going to rinse the marinade off. We're going to throw it onto the grill. And it's going to be, mmm, forgiven good. We got some cracked black pepper. That's about a tablespoon and a half. 
pouring in one cup of red wine, and just let this sit for a little while, and it's all good, baby. When we go back to the grill, it's gonna be all right. All right, boys, listen up, because Lucy's gonna be giving you girly gift tips. The reason that I wanted to do this segment, and I was so happy to be invited, was because I got into a situation where my boyfriend was totally in the doghouse. He forgot my birthday, which was last week. When he realized it was my birthday, he went to the drugstore and pitched to pick up <laughs> a lovely bouquet of flowers. They smell like cellophane. The classic cop-out, boys. And then he got me some lovely Nana slippers. <laughs> Nana slippers? <laughs> now, do you have a lovely robe to match these slippers, Lindsay? Oh my god, I just want to burn them, but I, I knew that the show was coming out, so I kept them. Are they even your size? I think they're a little big. <laughs> so, I don't ever want anyone to be in this situation again. And so, I am happy to tell you that there are places for men like you. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're buying a present for your girlfriend is, you're buying it for a girl. And so, for example, if, as a, a real man, would never buy a card like this. <laughs> However, girl. yeah. Girls love it. Love it. Mm. This is one of the first things I actually picked up and looked and said, oh, how cute. Yeah. I love this. It's so nice. Another so. thing that a guy would never buy would be a lame little teddy bear. <laughs> I think actually this is a pretty cute teddy bear and he comes with a little treasure trove of deliciousness. Yeah. He's great. He's got chocolate strapped to him. Yeah, some chocolate truffles which are delicious. But just buying one thing may not be enough. And so if you want to buy a, a collection of things that are appropriate, like, huh, oh, panic attack. But look at this little gift, Melissa. Can you see that, Robin? That is the cutest. Can you get a close up on the mug here? A little sexy girl on there. And then you've sexy got some girl. sweet treats on the inside. That's and great. inside of here, um, there are a couple of delicious uh, truffles. Um, some awesome bubble gum that comes with stickers for nails, nail polish deckles. Uh, some pixie sticks and this little necklace that has uh, sugar candies crazy. on it. Very reminiscent of the kind of stuff that your lady liked when she was a little girl, so it'll take mm. her back. So these are sort of, we've got some sweet gifts here, we've got some sort of sexy gifts, and we've got some... Cutie booty. Yeah, cute gifts. And that's exactly what the kind of thing that girls like. Believe it or not, you know, go to the wussiest bone in your body and use that to shop. <laughs> and she'll be red hot and ready to thank you later on. <laughs> All right, boys, now just a couple more tips to get you out of the doghouse. When you're looking for gifts for your girlfriend, don't tune her out. If she's been talking about the sweater downtown for months, guys, guess what? It's a hint. She wants that for her birthday. And if she doesn't give you any hints, another good thing that you can always do is just call up her friend, because they always have the inside scoop. What are you up to, Lucy? Well, just because these are things from a girl store doesn't mean that there aren't things in it that you will like. These are chocolate-covered potato chips. Come here, eat this. Cracker? Here, one for you. Chocolate covered chip. Robert. All right. What's the verdict, guys? <laughs> Here, have one. Mmm, these are pretty good. Yep. Crunchy and chocolatey. Mm -hmm. And not only are they good, but they are damn sure to get you out of a jam when your butt is nailed to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving. Oh, that's nice. This is the portion of the show where actually, baby, I gotta make my apology. <laughs> you know, I would have brought out a brass band, but you've been done sucking out all my cash for three years now. What do you think of that? Yeah, well, it's not a total loss, right? We do manage to have some of this chicken duck here, right? It's all marinated up with the plums. I'm gonna toss in this bowl. And I'm gonna grease it up, which is something you won't be doing to me ever again, baby. Keep it to yourself. I feel like I've been greased up, lubed up, taken to the cleaners, and spanked over backwards. You know what I'm saying? He's Passive a sick, fist and arm sick man. Comes out okay, okay. It'll take half an hour to cook. That's it, I promise. We'll talk about it over dinner, and afterwards, if you still wanna leave, no. You know, he's not funny. First thing we gotta do with our duck is lube it up. As I said, I've already done this, but somehow things are getting a little bit dry and crusty here. I think we need as much lubrication as we can get. 
You understand me, right? Terribly dishonest. Okay. We're getting a duck on the grill here. I'm gonna turn the temperature way down here. Keep an eye on this, because it's gonna flare up on you, right? A lot like some women I know. Oh my god. No, no, no. no. Nobody in particular, nobody specific. There's a lot of fat on these babies. Keep moving, moving them around. Do the little dance with the flames. Get it back here and we crank the side totally off. We're gonna shut this down as soon as these flames die down and cook in indirect heat, which is this side of the barbecue is gonna be on, this side is gonna be off. And we're gonna be basically treating the Barbecue like some kind of roasting machine, right? Ow! I'm a roasting machine. Okay, this is not quite ready to close yet because we still have too much heat going down here, right? Speaking of heat, last time I had an episode like this, there was heat all over my house like stink on a blanket. I still don't really know what it means. What? You've... So I said it before. It's a problem. Oh, so now I'm unoriginal, huh? Nothing's ever good enough for you, is it? Huh? Nothing's ever good enough for you. I... Here, we'll take it. What? Oh, God, look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Look, it's just the job. It's, 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 it's the pressure of the job. It's, it's... Look, I was, I was joking. <laughs> it's just a joke, you know? Like, I was, I was acting. I was... Where are you going? Phew. Phew, right? Okay, we're gonna make ourselves some kind of crazy plum compote to go with this. I'm gonna call Betty, Veronica, Sue, and Jilly over, and we're gonna have a bit of a swinging duck party. You know what I'm saying? A swinging duck party. Yeah, we're gonna close this down because he's gonna roast, as I said, in that indirect cooking method. You know, shut one side off, leave the other side going, put it on the side that isn't going, shut it down, keep it closed. It's an oven, it's a grilling oven, okay? Let's get on to our plums. These are damson plums. These are damn fine damson plums. Gonna cut them in half. Gotta get rid of the pits, because the pits aren't that happening. Oh yeah. Simple as that. Cut them in half, yank the pits out. Any idiot can do it. I still don't really know what it means. Once we got the pits out, we're just gonna chop them up into manageable bite-sized pieces. Straight like that. Watch your fingers. Excuse me. Have my whiskey. A lovely way to say I don't have to share. Mmm. Drinking all by myself. And chopping my plums without a goddamn care. Mmm. Yeah. Okay, enough of that. The stylings, the vocal stylings of me. Thank you very much. Into the pot, okay? We got a little heat on the pot. We're gonna add a cup of sherry. You can just use the cheap sherry, because that's all the stuff I have in my cupboard, right? We got some sherry vinegar. And this is one chopped red onion. A little bit of salt. That's about a teaspoon and a half. That's right, I'm back. And I got a cinnamon stick. This is what cinnamon comes from. They grind this stuff up into cinnamon, but it's still cinnamon now because it's just a cinnamon stick. Okay, so we're just gonna stir that around. Yeah, so it's a plum compote. What's a compote? A compote is a fancy name for a French jam, basically. It doesn't have to be sweet, doesn't have to be sour, it doesn't have to be bitter, doesn't have to be nothing. But in this case, it has to be plummy, because otherwise it's not a plum compote, is it? And about that woman that just left, that doesn't matter. I don't care. I am so over her. It doesn't matter, because there's plenty of fish in the sea, right? And I'm going swimming. This is the true bomb right here. This is what's gonna magically make this woman reappear into my life. Hey guys, if I've learned one thing in my cooking career, it's that it's a whole lot harder to impress a woman with a piece of cooked meat than it is with a big piece of raw meat. Let's get this onto the plate. Mm. This is gonna be perfectly cooked to medium rare, right? Which after all, is the doneness of love. I feel it coming at me now. The compote, that Frenchy French jam. Mm. Mm. And if this fails you, there's one last thing you can attempt. It's the grilled dessert. Seldom attempted, seldom achieved. 
What we got here is we got some pound cake. Raised about three quarters of a pound. I'm gonna grease it up. I'm gonna throw this right on the grill. While we're doing this, we're gonna start with our little strawberry something something, right? We got some Grand Marnier flambéed strawberries going over this with a little bit of maple ice cream. And if that's not enough to melt your heart, well, it'll make me happy. And that's what really matters. Why the hell are these guys such idiots? Well, that's what you have to do to girls, isn't it? <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> oh, poor boy. What happened? I don't know. She just acted up, but I didn't take it. <laughs> well, that's no good. Did you buy her these flowers? Yes. Well, that's <laughs> the problem. You should have got her roses. It would make a difference? Yes, they're the classic flower. What one should I get? Well, it's not too late. I know she'll go back. Okay, this is what you do. You get her red roses because red means love and respect. Love and respect. Yeah, but listen, stay away from the yellow roses because those mean jealousy. Who needs her? You're over her already, are you? I don't need her, man. You're here. Okay, why don't you finish cooking for me then? I'm making strawberries, and strawberries are the love food. Mm. Ooh! ooh. <laughs> that almost took my eyebrows off. That's Grand Marnier love strawberries. Love oh, strawberries. Oh, look at that. Mm. Mm. Oh, look at them sizzle. They look amazing. Can I steal one? Of course you can, darling. You've been very valuable and helpful to me. Oh, these are so good. Oh. Okay. Tell me what else you made here. I have duck, and we have some smoked salmon because it's really expensive, and I thought it would help. <laughs> and we have the ice cream and we have the flour salad. Mm. I absolutely love this ice cream. It's fantastic. You know why? Mm. It's because we're red hot and so, so over her. Oh. The home of smoky good eats. Mm.